Let's do our identity prayer. You ready? I know that within myself there is that life which is perfect, complete, divine. It was never born and cannot die, for it lives and is God. Within myself is the wholeness, peace, poise, and power of life. This life is health, it is abundance, it is love. There is one life, and it is the life of God, and this is my life now, and so it is. You believe that? Yes. Me too. Me too. It's almost Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas. All the manic stuff, we've got to go through that, right? All right, so we don't need to talk about that. We don't need to talk about settling down and being in the Spirit and all those traditional things that we sometimes talk about around here, around Christmas. I want to talk about, I want to talk about Christmas symbols. I want to talk about this wreath. Isn't that the most beautiful wreath you yeah. know? I love that wreath. I'm going to stand over here and look at it for a second. It's covered with candy. I mean, how much fun is that? And beautiful ribbons. I just, it, I get giddy when I look at this thing. Maggie's not in the room, is she? Maggie's probably with her mom. Yeah. But I love that. Look at that tree. Isn't that a beautiful tree? Yeah. I, you know, even though that is not a, a, a living tree in the sense of being a, a, an organism, uh, it, is, it is a wonderful symbol of, of the holidays. And don't you just feel good when you see a Christmas tree? I do too. I absolutely do. In fact, I've been pondering trees all week and thinking about this idea of Christmas trees. So I did a little research, and I thought I'd let you in on the history of Christmas trees. There's some interesting stuff to say about this. Christmas trees have been around at least since the 1400s, the early 1400s, which means that Christmas trees have been around since the earth was flat. Because <laughs> that didn't change until 1492. Christmas trees. They started in northern Germany somewhere. Somebody got the idea of, of decorating a tree in celebration of the, of the who knows what it was then, the solstice, the, uh, uh, the whole idea of Christmas. Uh, it doesn't really matter. It's just a, an incredibly festive thing. So I was looking at how we have, have related to this idea of a Christmas tree. And I, I found that there's a lot of names for Christmas trees. They've been called Yule trees, paradise trees, creation trees. They've, uh, in, uh, in the Soviet Union, uh, they're called, well, in Russia now, uh, Yolkas. Uh, the Soviets tried to change it to the New Year's tree, but I don't think that caught on. Uh, and then there's that thing called Tannenbaum. Have you heard of that? O Tannenbaum, translated as O Christmas tree. Tannenbaum does not mean Christmas tree, it means fir tree. Which is interesting because apparently uh, early Christmas trees were firs, now mostly they're spruce. But the idea is still there, and, and it's a lovely song. You, you, you know that song? Yes. Yeah, I, I know. I wrote down the words to it because I thought they were really kind of fun. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, how steadfast are your branches. Your boughs are green in summer's clime and through the snows of winter time. Oh, Christmas tree, oh, Christmas tree, what happiness befalls me when at joyous Christmas time your form inspires my song and rhyme. O oh, Christmas tree, O oh, Christmas tree, your vows can teach a lesson that constant faith and hope sublime lend strength and comfort through all time. Nice words about a tree. <laughs> I, I don't think we give we give trees in general. I mean, we we, we ordain we put ornaments and and lights all over them, and they become beautiful. But trees are really cool things all the time. In fact, one of the one of the real fundamental relationships between human beings and nature is the tree. The native people call uh, trees the standing people. And they, they don't call them by their species ever. Because that, that uh, is, is like calling, walking around calling you human. And, and nobody calls you human, even though we know that's your species. They, they see them as sentient beings that have, they can have a relationship with. My first spiritual teacher in, uh, in Australia taught me that if I ever had a headache, that I could go put my, my forehead against a tree and put the headache in the tree. And because it, the tree doesn't have to deal with headaches, it just takes it as energy. You know what? It works. Try it sometimes. It's quite amazing. Just 
put that energy right into the tree and the tree just dissipates it. Think about what trees do in our lives. They create shelter. We build with them. Uh, we, uh, we build furniture out of them. We, uh, have, we get fruit from them. We get nuts from them. We actually use their bark and, and their roots for certain things. Cinnamon is from the bark of a tree. Aspirin was created from the bark of a tree. There's all kinds of things that we haven't used these, these things for. I remember when, uh, when they were widening the road out to, when we lived in Fairview, that they, they took down all these trees to build, to widen the highway. And how I, I was there once when they were cutting and saw some trees fall. And how there was a sadness in that, yet I'm not sure that trees don't give themselves pretty, pretty willingly to the process of being on this planet. I know when we came to this land, there were trees. In fact, I, uh, I tried not to cut down the trees on this ridge over here. I really didn't want to do it. But we needed a way to get onto the property that was wide enough, and we didn't own the land on this side. So we had to build this rather steep. I know some of you complained about it driveway over here, and a lot of trees had to come down, but because uh, John Savage had a, 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 a lumber mill, we actually were able to take the lumber from those trees that we cut down, and they're, they're uh, used around the windows in the back of this room, and in fact, all through these buildings and in our home, the flooring is all from trees that came off this land. Oh, yeah. I just have this deep love for trees, and I don't see them as just plants. I mean, just like <clears throat> falling in, I mean, all, all plants are alive. But there's something about trees that are just spectacular to me. I find them to be incredibly intelligent beings. They, they have this relationship with nature that is so amazing. For example, trees are designed themselves so that when the rain falls, their leaves and needles and branches direct the water that, that hits them to their feeder roots. They also, obviously, because they have nuts and, and branches that, that birds can perch on, lots of animals, climbing animals and birds, all come and hang out on the trees. And their droppings actually feed the tree. It's this wonderful relationship. And, and I, so I always have this loving thing. You know, we have this sycamore tree that, that sits over our house. It kind of creates a canopy over our house. And in the, in the summer, it's covered with leaves, so our house is shaded in the winter. All the leaves are gone, and the sun shines into our house. It's just wonderful. And then we've got this amazing oak tree. Have you seen the oak tree up on, on our upper parking lot? That's uh, one of those spectacular trees I've ever seen. And we are so blessed to have that one. I know many of us have gone up there and spent time under that tree, uh, meditating or reflecting or praying. And it's just an amazing connection up there. Uh, that's been pointed out as, as, as one of the, uh, actually a historic tree in this part of North Carolina and where there's talk about having some master tree tenders <coughs> come in and take care of it for us just to make sure that it's healthy and whole. All of that about a tree, a tree, a symbol, a symbol we use at Christmas time. All that out of a tree. So I thought it'd be fun to look at some Christmas trees or some symbols of Christmas trees around the country. And so I've got some slides for you here that we're going to look at. So Barbara, whenever you're ready, we can start. You recognize that? That's the nation's capital. And that particular tree is decorated with 3,000 ornaments and sits right outside the capital there uh, in, a, in an area that's called uh, the Pathway of Peace. And along that path, there are 50 evergreens that represent the 50 states. And every Christmas, that's where the, the nation's Christmas tree sits. And, uh, and uh, the ornaments on it are actually created by school children around the country. Yeah. The next one is, is the symbol of the tree, but it simply lights on a mountain. That's located, that is actually technically the world's largest Christmas tree symbol. It's composed of 500 lights connected by 4,000 feet of wire. And it rises up on the slopes of uh, Monte in Inigno, which is outside of uh, Gubbio, France. Italy, excuse me, Italy. And uh, sits over that town that you're looking at there. Isn't that something? The next one, can you see it there in the building? That's actually in Tokyo, Japan. That's the, uh, the Grand Prince Hotel. And every Christmas in Tokyo, they, they have the symbol of the Christmas tree there for everyone to see. This next one is actually in the Czech Republic. That's uh, the uh, tree that uh, is cut in the Czech Republic and sits in Prague's Old Town Square. 
That's uh, one of those traditions that's been going on for hundreds of years. It's a different kind of tree. I don't know if Victor's here today. Yes, sir. That's a glass Christmas tree, Victor. It's from your Actually, actually, it's in Venice. Uh, it's from Simone Sidisi, who is a, a, a sculptor, a master glass sculptor in, uh, in Venice. And it is the tallest glass tree in the world. Yeah, those are people standing at the bottom of it. This one here, yeah, this one here is, is actually in Russia. And uh, that sits in a, in a square in, uh, in Moscow. And it's called a yoka. Uh, the, the Russian Orthodox don't, don't experience Christmas at the same date as January 7th, but they have this spectacular tree that sits there. Uh, I think the, the Russian people have pretty much released that idea that it's a New Year's tree. It's a Christmas tree. This is the largest Christmas tree uh, in, uh, in Europe, the largest actual tree. It sits in a uh, trade square in the city of Lisbon, Portugal. And uh, it stands 230 feet tall and is covered with thousands of light, lights. We don't actually know any lights are on there, but there are thousands of them. This is beautiful. I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But we're going to call it a tree nonetheless. <laughs> this is uh, this little Christmas tree that sits out in front of this tiny chapel in the mountains of southern Germany. Uh, is is humble, yet it's so beautiful and majestic, stand, sitting there in the mountains of southern Germany in front of this little chapel. This is uh, in, in uh, St. Peter's Square in Rome. This is the, uh, the official Christmas tree of the Catholic Church, apparently. It's quite beautiful. This is the Christmas tree that stands at the entrance of uh, the Port of the Sun in Madrid, Spain. Quite a beautiful tree as well. This is an interesting tree. It sits in Trafalgar Square in London. Every year, the people of Norway, every year since 1947, the people of Norway have sent a tree, a Christmas tree, to the people of Great Britain in gratitude for uh, their uh, great efforts during World War II. Yeah. Amazing. I'm going to remember which one this is. Oh, good, there's more. There it is. This Christmas tree sits in uh, at the holiday market in uh, the city of Frankfurt in Germany. And this, there has been a tree in this spot every year since 1405. So I don't know if it's the same tree. I don't know if that tree is actually planted there or posted there, but. But a tree has sat in that, in, in that spot every year since 1405. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. And then this one, it's just so beautiful. I just wanted I you to see it. <laughs> Isn't that great? <coughs> Christmas trees. And they evoke this wonderful sense of, of holiday spirit and all. And it's really just about lights. It's just about the idea of Christmas trees. You can go to the next one, Barbara. So we're here to celebrate. That's what we do here at this center. We celebrate, and it's Christmas time. So we celebrate the trees. We celebrate life in all of its form and in all of the ways that it shows up. You know, if we would spend more time celebrating on a daily basis, we'd get a different outcome than if we will spend so much time worrying about getting things done or having things be right according to our expectations of the world. If we could actually just be in the space of knowing that everything is all right. Symbols, Christmas symbols, there are so many Christmas symbols. There are so many ways that we, that we celebrate Christmas, and most of them we don't take time to really appreciate. And some of them we don't even understand. For example, how many of you, raise your hand if you know the song called 12 Days of Christmas? Most of us know the song. How many of you have sung it this season? Four of you, okay. That's because it seems like a nonsensical song. What's Lord's a leapy? What's Maid's a milky? I mean, come on. What are we talking about here? It just seems like gibberish, right? What could that possibly mean? Do, do you all know what it means? 
Well, I found out what it means, and I want to share it with the rest of you that, that aren't familiar with that. It's a, it's a um, catechism song. It's a catechism song. And it came from, from England, where for almost 300 years, Catholics weren't allowed to practice their faith. You know, that whole, uh, uh, who was the king? Uh, king Henry VIII said, we're going to have a, a, a Church of England, no more Catholics. And they went back and forth on this for decades, actually, for, for centuries. And for almost 300 years, you just couldn't be a Catholic outwardly, openly, in, in that country. So somebody created a catechism song so the kids could learn from it. And if they used, they created a Christmas song. And every one of the, of the numbers in the song actually means something. So I thought it'd be fun just to share that with you. The 12 drummers uh, symbolize the 12 points of the Apostles' Creed. I got D over here. She knows this. Well, thing. I got the same email. <laughs> the 11, the 11 Pied Pipers are the, are the uh, faithful apostles, or excuse me, disciples. The 10 Lords of Leaping are the 10 Commandments. This is the way kids could remember these things. Nine Ladies Dancing was about um, the nine fruits of the Holy Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. The eight maids of milking were about the eight beatitudes. The seven swans of swimming were about the gifts of the Holy Spirit, said to be prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, contribution, leadership, and mercy. The six geese of laying were to be the six days of creation. The five golden rings represented the Torah, the first five books of the Old Testament. The four calling birds were the four gospels. The three French hens were the uh, Apostle Paul's uh, abiding virtues, faith, hope, and love. The two turtle doves were the Old and the New Testament. And I bet you can guess who the partridge and the pear tree was. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. So isn't that interesting that, that uh, people found a way to involve themselves in that without, uh, without and, and doing it kind of in code? Isn't it nice that we live in a time we don't have to do that anymore, where we can be who we are uh, out loud in the world? And, you know, if somebody doesn't like it, there's not much they can do about it because we have the freedom to express ourselves uh, as, as openly as we want to about how we perceive the universe. And I love that. But what I realized was that we didn't, we don't really have that kind of a song that works for us. Or do we? <laughs> So how, what do you think about, about a, a new thought 12 days of Christmas? Would that not be an interesting idea? Yeah, yeah. So I'm going to put you all work now. And we're going to sing the new thought 12 days of Christmas. A cappella. All right? And I know we have some good singers in the room, so I want you all to sing out with me. And let's put up the first screen so we can kind of get a sense of what, where we're going with this. This is where we're starting. We're going to go through all 12 days, okay? You know how it adds as we go? The idea here is, obviously, remember this was a catechism song so that, you, so that children would learn those things about their faith. Well, that's what we're going to do. We're going to, we're going to create a repetitive <laughs> song, a sense of a way to really connect with the ideas that we have in New Thought. So it, it, it goes like this. On the first day of Christmas, Great Spirit said, through me, not to me, that's dualistic, through me, fill your life with peace and love. And we're going to go on from there. You ready to do this? Oh my God, Richard! Woo! Oh, this is so good. I'm so glad you're here. Apparently, we're not doing this a cappella. We're actually going to do it. Maestro. Uh, well, what, what? We're going to start on the on the first day of, of Christmas. Yeah. There you go. What? Did he ask you what key? Me? Yes. Wherever you go, we're going to go with you. Day of Christmas, great spirit sent through me, fill your life with peace and love. On the second day of Christmas, great spirit sent through me, live in the now and fill your life with peace and love. On the third day of Christmas, great spirit sent through me, let go of fear.
this meditation. Strive to be patient. Know you're abundant. Always be thankful. Look on the bright side. Love.